Hello, everyone. Um, I um, good morning. Um, I'm I'm seeing a greeting from the chat. Um, it's great to see um some um uh, non Chris team members uh, joining as well as the server. So um, uh, let me first start with uh, confirming who's here from the Chris team. So um, Andres. So um, I somehow did. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, and Andre. Andres. Um. John uh, Nirani are uh, here um, from the Chris team, and um, and of course her man is here to support us um, as the NRO secretariat and uh, Loriana. Oh, and uh, great Mwanda um, was uh, joining us as well. So um, I was hoping that um, if John Rea, the new um, new team member, was here, um, it would have been a good opportunity to. Um, it, um, introduce um, them to the team, but um, let's uh, first go to agenda uh, bashing. So, update on the Chris team composition, as I mentioned uh, just now about the new member, and a couple of uh, action items that uh, we'd like to cover um, is action on um, agenda number three. Agenda four is um, confirm community feedback. So, these are the regular um, agenda up to four. And um, there are quite a couple of points that I uh, would like to um, highlight uh, for this call. So, agenda number five is update on the interview with the GAO, the U.S. Government um, Accountability Office. Um, I'd also like to do an update on the call with the NOEC, um, especially covering the um, the next steps. Um, on the implementation and how the Chris team would be involved. Um, number seven is, um, this is rather than the update, more of the point that I'd like to consult with you on preparation for the ICANN board panel, which is scheduled on this weekend and, um, and then the date for the next meeting. So, um, I've realized that after I've sent out the agenda, um, the, the names uh, proposal, the, the names CWG proposal is posted. So we might want to um, cover on this. Um, well, part of that will be covered as action item. But if there's anything else that we'd like to discuss further, then we can add this um, at the last point of the agenda. So is there anything else that um, you'd like to add to the agenda today? I mean, I w we're pretty packed, but then if people have really urgent needs about it um, or questions about the agenda, then um, uh, please raise your hand. Azumi, uh, <clears throat> I think the uh, the new uh, guy wanted. He's asked. He sent an email asking for a pointer to access to the meeting. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, thank you, John, for. Um, Letting us know. So, How do you pronounce um, his name? Javier? Han, Hanvier? John Veer? Yeah. John Veer, yes. So, um, yeah. would anyone be able to help him point to the URL? Yeah, I'm going to send it to him. It's John. Perfect. Great. Thank you, John. So, maybe perhaps um, we'll wait for. Um, maybe we'll cover the um, the action items that maybe he might not miss too much on, um, like administrative things, and then um, go back to um, his introduction once he can once he can join. So um, let's go to confirm the action items. So um, when it's from the last call, this has been circulated to the Chris team, and I'm not sure if this has been posted on the NL website. Um, if it's not, then um, it's ready to be posted or published. Um, so may I confirm the status? I haven't been that was that today. Okay, noted. Um, but I believe this will be um, published just shortly. Um, and uh, 3B, uh, share future steps with the community. So that's the action item from the last uh, call, um, making sure that the community knows what would be the RIR meetings that's happening and the role of the Chris team. And um, I have already sent this out on the IANA uh, expert global mailing list. Um, so this is done. Um, 3C. 
Sorry, did I hear something? Did somebody want to speak? Or maybe I just uh, misheard. Oh, it would be great if um, somebody could mute. Um, I, I hear some noises. So let's go to 3C. Um, confirm about the handling of the, the intellectual property rights with the IETF trust, um, with the IETF um, representatives, because some issues were raised related to the intellectual property rights from a member of the CWG names. Um, so I communicated uh, with um, Yari and Russ but I haven't heard back from them. So this perhaps needs a, a, a follow-up again. Um, 3D, arrange a call with the CW stewardship chairs. Um, so I have actually uh, contacted them uh, with uh, Norwegian CC, and they have actually agreed to have a call with us. But I think they just got absorbed by this the deadline of publishing their, their draft. Um, so they haven't gone up back to us with specific schedules. So this needs a follow-up. And we actually like uh, offered to, to have a talk before the, the, the proposal was published. So we might want to reconsider the purpose of the call with them. Um, and so I'd like to consult and discuss with you on, on how we want to, to, do, to do this. Um, and then let's just like uh, try to move on to 3E and then confirm any uh, comments on any of the action items. So um, E, do the poll on um, future call day. Um, I think uh, Herman has already sent her the doodle poll. So uh, I think it's just left um, to decide on a particular uh, day and regular cycle. Uh, of the Chris team. So um, on the action items, um, is there anything um, that people want to comment more on or questions about? Hi, Zumi. Well, I apologize. I, I raised hand, but not in the private window. Um, so if you expect any feedback on, on 3D, on the uh, call with CWG chairs, um, I have uh, some feedback, but unless you want to move on to other items. Um, yeah, let's, um, uh, could, could you just uh, briefly share and then see if this needs like uh, to be moved on to later or, so um, yeah, please go ahead. It, well, my point is, yeah, uh, I'll be quick. Uh, I think uh, the purpose of this call was to get the early warning from CWG if any implications for the uh, crisp uh, in the names proposal. I think we got this early morning, well, the warning again, and now with CWG proposal published. So uh, I think the purpose indeed is, remains the same to assess those implications, but we as Chris team might require to do some homework before we um, are prepared to do this call, in my opinion. Excellent. So uh, very much in line with uh, my thinking as well. So we, you know, we of course, uh, uh, for courtesy, should read the, the proposal in advance and um, and uh, do a little uh, preparation work, and then ask them to um, highlight the points from their perspective, which may be um, affecting us. So I, I very much agree with um, uh, Andre's comment. Um, does anybody else want to? Um, have any observations or comments related to this point? I'm not seeing any hands. And Nurani is um, agreeing with Andre. So we're all in agreement. Excellent. Um, so let's uh, move on to agenda four. So confirm community feedback. So um, there was airing 35 meetings this last call. So would anybody from the airing region be able to give us an update? This is John. Um, I guess I can give an update. Michael's on as well. I don't see Bill. Um, we we pretty much we took up a full hour, but the the crisp update was uh, about 10 to 12, 13 minutes, uh, and we just used the basic uh, presentation um, from the NRO that's uh, been published out there for everyone to use, so we, we put out the same information. Um, there was a lot, of, a lot of other things that 
Bill went into, and if Michael's on and wants to give a quick update on what he updated about the SLA um, development, um, I'll let him do that. But as far as the CRISP update, everybody just, you know, was just happy to uh, to see the update, and, and there was a lot of compliments from people during during the presentation and after the presentation privately to us that, you know, how, how great a job the CRISP team and how appreciative they were of all our efforts. So to, to everybody out there, you know, that the Aaron community was very, very um, appreciative of our working as much as we did, especially through the holidays. Michael, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Um, hello, everybody. I just wanted to uh, just follow up on what John was saying. Uh, absolutely, there was a lot of uh, good feedback from the community uh, regarding the CRISP team, so I definitely wanted to pass that on to everybody that even after the panel, uh, multiple people came up and said that they thought we did a great job. There was a lot of uh, transparency and opportunity for people from the community to give feedback. Um, some of them had not even realized how much work had gone into what we were doing, so they were very appreciative to get the update, know where we were. Uh, my portion was just to give an update on the SLA drafting, which um, at the time it was, you know, in the middle of the week, we had intended uh, the legal drafting team to get a draft of the SLA to the um, NROEC by that Friday, which we did, and um, it's in their hands right now. So we just, uh, in my part, I reiterated to the community that the SLA drafting portion was um, guided by the CRISP team principles. You know, our, our intention was 100% to be in line with what the CRISP team proposal uh, that came out that we uh, released to the ICG. And that uh, furthermore, if there was anything that would even be close to ambiguity um, in terms of consistency with the CRISP proposal, particularly the um, the key elements that we had, uh, or the principles that we had listed in the proposal about the SLA, that uh, our expectation and suggestion was that any of those items be specifically called out and highlighted. And um, John Curran spoke a little bit as well, and he confirmed this, that there would be no component of whatever the SLA, proposed SLA draft that would uh, be the resulting product of our efforts, that there would be no component that had not gone through the community consultation process or that uh, people had not had a chance to review comments and um, any questions. So uh, I think that was that was the big part of it. You know, we had a lot of questions. There were things about how um, it kind of spilled over probably into the accountability part, um, but there were questions about that and how any SLA would, would ensure any accountability mechanisms would pass on to maybe future operators and and there was questions about uh, periodic review, but you know, obviously those were all items that we spoke about on the um, during the CRISP proposal drafting. So, um, so everything was consistent. Uh, I think people really enjoyed the updates. Uh, you know, I know that uh, the rest of the RIRs are going to be, uh, I think, doing the same type of thing. So, unless anybody has any questions, I think uh, hopefully we've captured everything that happened there. And also, uh, I'm been, I'm in the middle of drafting an update from the Aaron region on what happened uh, with regards to SLA drafting and IANA transition kind of discussions. And so I'll be submitting that soon, and I believe we're hoping to put that on the NRO website. So unless anybody has any questions, that is it. Beautiful. Does anybody have any comments or questions to um, update from the Aaron representative? I see no hands up, um, so um, yeah, I was uh, listening remotely as well and uh, really good uh, discussions. And I think the point um, that we were able to clearly confirm um, the part about the transparency and um, uh, acknowledgement that um, the SLA texts will be in line with the uh, proof team proposal, I think that's a great thing. And um, anything else from um, other RIR regions? Uh, yes. Mwendwa um, Kibuba here from Afrinic region. Great. Can I, can I go ahead? Hello? Let's go ahead. Hello. Okay. The, we have an IANA stewardship transition meeting in the Afrinic 22. 
meeting that will be held in Tunisia, Tunis, from 1st to 5th June 2015. We also have an IANA transition month that is being facilitated by ICANN for the African region, and several countries are arranging face-to-face -face meetings to discuss the IANA transition, including CRIS and also the ICANN accountability. I'm sure of a conference that will be held in Nairobi on Thursday, 30 of April, to discuss the IANA transition. So that's all in, from the African region. Thank you very much for the update, and we'd certainly be interested um, in hearing how the meeting uh, um, went once it, it is um, um, held. So thank you very much for this uh, update. Okay. And um, so let me just uh, finish this, um, this uh, agenda item four, and then um, move back to our uh, agenda item two, um, as I see um, John Vier joining us. So um, on the global list, um, um, there was a post uh, from uh, Pinda Wong about um, related to the question on the the, um, the meeting that we will have. Uh, well, I, I will be participating um, as the ICANN board panel and also the status of the SLA. And um, I'm aware that um, the RIRs are working towards um, publishing this, uh, but I didn't feel so appropriate for me to, to share the details, and um, I was hoping that uh, somebody from the RIRs would be able to um, share the, the, the status, including very like rough timeline when this can be shared um, on the global mailing list so that uh, we give assurance, and I, I really don't want to give the wrong impression as though RIRs are holding something back and, um, and don't want to share anything, which is is uh, not not the case. So um, I don't know if um, any of the um, Chris team members um, um, who's here. Well, I think Michael is the only um, Chris team member who's in RIR staff um, joining today. So um, I, I don't know. Andres. I oh, am Andres. Oh, yes. <laughs> Sorry, Andres. Of course, you're here here as well. So like, I don't, I don't know if. Um, Either one of you, or um, I don't know, perhaps uh, her man um, can can like um, can let us know if anybody um, anything more can be shared on the global um, mailing list. I can I, I can certainly agree with most of uh, Michael's approach or his description. Um, the areas are uh, pretty much all together in the same place in the same page here. Uh, we don't have a, a, maybe in some other aspects or topics, we have some differences uh, of opinion or subtle differences. In this, in this situation, I believe the, the description of, Ma, of Michael that Michael has done uh, reflects the vision of the areas. And uh, specific, specifically regarding uh, information to be shared, um, I believe, uh, well, uh, I, I don't know if we have something to add at the moment, but if it, but I will keep uh, myself uh, uh, at least aware about if it is anything else. Um, okay. Uh, thank you, Andres, for um, for clearly confirming that um, um, your um, understanding of the status is um, consistent with Michael. So I don't know, maybe like um, those um, RIR staff who are at the Chris call, uh, maybe like uh, pretty much um, have the same level of information as what has uh, what has been shared by Michael, and uh, uh, may not be able to share anything more specific, such as like a very rough idea about the uh, schedule, like how when this can be published and things like this. So, um, uh, or does anybody feel otherwise? So I see no comments, so maybe we'll just wait for RIR to, to share the um, 
share the status as, um, as soon as possible. And I'll share a little bit more details about the call um, that Nurani and I joined uh, with the NRO or for the call for the NROEC. So um, any other comments on um, item 4? Okay, um, no other comments. So, um, so uh, I see our John Beers joining us uh, as the new Chris team member. So um, he is uh, replacing Alan as the representative from the Afrinic region. So um, welcome, John Beer. It's really great to have you, and uh, looking forward to work together with you. And I just wonder, like, if you want to just like uh, let us hear your voice um, a little bit um, and just say hi. Okay, thank you. Hi everyone. Uh, I'm Jean-Vier Nulay. I'm really very happy to join you here uh, in this meeting. So uh, I'm happy to join you. So thank you. Thank you to, all, to welcome me. Thank you. Thanks very much, Jean-Vier, and nice to hear your voice. And uh, so um, just in case, you know, uh, how we proceed is not clear. Um, if you want to make any uh, comments, um, then you just like uh, type in hand, and then you will be given the turn to, to speak out. Or if you just don't feel like speaking out and express your opinion on the chat, then you can also do that. So, um, so um, welcome once again. And uh, let's move on to agenda item five. So update um, from um, GAO interview. Um, so I gave an update um, on the Christie mailing list about um, what happened. So basically it was um, very much, um, firstly, um, GAO, the Government Accountability Office, their role is to report to the Congress about this um, NTIA stewardship transition and um, if there are any, like, um, if the requirements that have been set by the NTIA is sufficient in addressing um, all possible risks and uh, how people, uh, what would be the impact of this uh, stewardship uh, transition. So that uh, basically is the background um, of the interview with the GAO. And um, in submitting a report, they are apparently not going to refer to a particular individual. Um, and they just, just summarize what they hear from different um, um, leaders um, who are involved in, um, in this uh, stewardship transition. So I, I think they've um, reached to most of the um, leaders in the three operational communities. They've reached out to ICANN accountability chairs, and I think they will also reach out to Aaron. Um, so that's the basic background. And uh, the questions have been shared um, from Nurani, um, our, res our draft res response. Um, but we didn't submit this to, um, to the GAO yet. It was just to help us um, in uh, re responding to them verbally. And the things to highlight is that um, there were a couple of things that they weren't aware of. Um, first, um, the fact that RIRs are not simply the registry, but they're facilitating the, um, the policy discussions forum. So there, there's all this whole community of, of the number of resources behind them, um, and RIRs are able to represent um, the views of the community. So, um, so that was something that was new to them. Uh, another thing that was new to them was the fact that um, the policy development process for the numbers is not within the ICANN forum. And it's only um, ICANN, oh, ICANN board only simply approves um, the global policy, which is very limited in scope, um, covering the, the distribution for um, the IANA to the RIRs. And um, this was something that was new to them. One thing I would like to highlight is um, it wasn't in the pre-shared um, question. Was they asked the issue about um, the um, well, let's just uh, say separability for the for the ease of um, understanding. So the fact that we are able to change the INL operator um, um, in the future, and they asked whether this would be the only um, solution in ensuring accountability. Aren't there any other measures that can be taken um, before um, you know, um, uh, trying to address the issue of accountability by changing the contractor? And this may lead to 
the splitting of the inner function. So that was the question that was um, being asked. Um, and how, how we, um, I don't remember if I've shared how we responded to, to it, but uh, basically what I said was um, we already have good experience with the ICANN, and, and this is just like referred to as a possibility. It's not like we have a concrete plan, and we would expect that um, the SLA uh, criteria sets all these um, specific uh, expectations in terms of the service level. So if any issues arise, we would expect that issues will be um, addressed uh, um, through what is described in the SLA um, before, beforehand. Uh, so that was the basic direction of how I responded. And then we will um, be submitting the written um, response um, to the um, GAT GAO. So I think um, you will, the Chris team will have a chance to review it um, before we actually submit this. So that's the recap, and uh, I don't know if Nirani wants to add anything. Thank you, Zumi. No, I think you, you covered it well. Um, I think the, the, just to clarify, and I think maybe you put that in the mail to the Chris list, um, that any questions that they're not provided us in advance, um, that they uh, brought up during the telephone conference, they said they would write, send it to us in writing and, and, uh, and get a confirmed text from us before uh, putting it in their report. And we'll also be able to review this report that will be uh, published in June. Um, I think uh, one with regard to this last issue that, that you mentioned about the the SLA um, between the RIS and the IANA numbering services operator was also uh, in that question, which was one of these um, questions that had not been uh, submitted to us in advance, was how easy or difficult would it be in practice uh, to change IANA numbering services operator? And of course, that's a very subjective question. And, and I feel some of these, um, particularly that question, we might want to um, find um, find wording on that everyone in the CRISP team um, feels comfortable with uh, before we, we submit it to them to be in a public report. Thanks. Thanks, Nirani. And um, so first I'd like to um, see if anybody have any questions or comments um, for this update. I see um, no hand, and I, as I confirmed, I was um, asking on the Christine like mailing list. We'd like to share this um, to the global analyst as well once we fix the answer. Oh, sure, Nirani. Uh, sorry, I, I, thanks again for, for the floor. I just wanted to add, um, um, like you were saying, that, that uh, we'd propose to, to share this on the global list. Uh, we, we did some edits to it, and um, I, I think both of you and I felt that we might want to, as, as text is not the best written text, so before we publish it, we might just want to uh, polish it a little bit, since, since it was more a guide for, you know, for us to use in the, in, in the telephone conference. Uh, and I think having that sort of material well written out there is very good. And ju then just as a comment on that too, and we don't necessarily need to discuss it here and now since we have a lot to discuss uh, today, but it sort of highlighted to me as well uh, that some of this supporting uh, information and background information uh, it's really very useful to have out there. And the RIRs have a lot of this information uh, but it might be spread over various documents and various websites. Uh, and I just feel, especially now, as we're moving in towards the, the end of this process and as the CWG and CCWG are publishing their proposals, that it would be very useful to have this um, informative uh, additional supporting documentation um, available in one spot on the CRISP team website because it helps people understand the proposal and understand the various elements and the, the motivation uh, behind some of these things. So I just wanted to flag that um, to, to possibly be discussed. Thank you. Um, thank you, Nirani. I, I totally agree with this and um, I actually both of us felt that 
um, before going straight to the um, explaining the proposal itself, there are kind of um, from our perspective basic things that uh, we would um, we're just so used to it, so we would uh, assume people would know, but um, people don't. Um, example, like a separate uh, forum for um, num number of resources, or so. I think it, it's, it would be good that we actually uh, clearly document this, and um, so I, I totally support this. So um, as a way forward, maybe we can um, we can consult with the um, the Chris team um, um, members who are RIR staff and any RIR staff who are willing to help in this and um, and maybe work together to to um, have a good information to be published on the um, on the Chris team website um, the, the NRL Chris team website. And um, I just want to, to say that um, unless there are any concerns about uh, sharing this uh, uh, um, response that um, we um, submit to GAO on the global uh, list, uh, once we fix the contents, um, we, we would like to go ahead and, and do this. I see um, no... Um, no questions or concerns related to this, so um, this is the fixed action item. And thank you, Michael, for the comment and uh, offer to um, for assistance in drafting the response. That would be very helpful. Um, thank you. So uh, let's move to action uh, agenda six. So this is the update from the call with you know, and um, so this actually there was a lot of um. um status update related to, to the SLA. And um, so what we managed to confirm with NROEC was that um, first they, uh, they will make an announcement as RIR officially that they acknowledge the Chris team proposal and uh, will, will work on implementation consistent with the Chris team proposal. That's one point. And the second point is um, they will publish um, uh, time, rough uh, guidance of timeline, um, the expected timeline that uh, which will take on the implementa preparing implementation. So that will be covering the SLA and the review committee. But we didn't have much time to talk about the review committee in details, so this needs a follow-up. Um, and the third point um, is that, um, so they, they are actually working on they are, I think there's already a SLA draft available, and they are just uh, preparing to, to have it uh, published. So I would expect this to be happening very soon. Um, so those are the major points of um, what we confirmed as um, the NREC will be doing. Um, so are there any questions uh, related to the status before I go on to consult about uh, the Chris team more in the future? I don't see any hands. So, um, so we also discussed about how the Chris team may be um, able, to, um, may be expected to be involved in the future steps uh, in uh, preparing implementation. And of course, um, in making community consultation, uh, it is expected that RIRs will, will lead this because this is the part that um, the implementation part is what RIRs are responsible in working on. But um, it would uh, it was considered helpful if the Chris team would be able to share observation on the community feedback, whether this comment is consistent with the intention of the proposal or not. Because um, we have already developed the proposal, agreed, and this is based in consensus, and we're not like um, adding things or like changing things uh, on the proposal that was already um, reached consensus. So this kind of observation um, to be shared um, will be helpful in guiding the NROEC and the, on the and RIRs in um, um, considering. Um, any possible comments that needs to be reflected in preparing the SLA text. So um, that's the basic uh, idea. And um, do people have any comments? Andre. Thank you, Zumi. Uh, so I have a question about the process. Um, in my understanding, the RIS will prepare a draft SLA, and then uh, there will be some community discussion uh, to ensure that the SLA is actually consistent with the principles, right, and fits in the boundary conditions developed by the proposal. So in, in kind of in this context, it's not very clear to me why would Chris team 
somehow assess community feedback. Rather, I can see how Chris team could, could assess the proposal based on the community feedback, but not the other way around. So maybe you can clarify that point. I think um, the idea is that um, it would help um, RIRs um, like um, in judging whether this, uh, a certain uh, community feedback is, uh, is in line with uh, the spirit of the Christian proposal and it's just like trying to say, hey, this was actually uh, proposed but it's not properly reflected in the Italian language. Or this is like uh, this community comment is something that is like totally different from you know um, the Christian proposal, and uh, it would be very uh, strange if um, RARs take in that comment and reflect that in the SLA text. Um, the reason they want the um, Christian to do this is because we are the community representatives, um, and uh, in um, in developing the proposals, so we're in the best position to make this uh, judgment rather than RIRs. Uh, themselves do that. That was the. I think that's my understanding of the idea. Just, uh, just one, one comment. It just sounded strange because the proposal was based on the community feedback. So uh, that's the whole thing. Uh, and if we say, well, now community feedback is not consistent with the proposal, that might sound strange. There might be individuals that might suggest something that doesn't fit and, um, yeah, is outside or not consistent with the proposal. But I would still rather focus on the SLA and say, hey, and maybe guide community discussion of this SLA. That's how I would see the role of, of Chris, not as a kind of police on community input into the SLA proposal. I think that's probably not the very appropriate role for Chris. Okay, um, I, I'm not sure if I uh, fully um, understood your, your point, so perhaps maybe you can clarify, but um, let me just uh, first go to Michael, and then um, it would be great if I can reconfirm your point, Andre. So, um, Michael. Yes, thank you, Zumi. And actually, my comment might be uh, somewhat pertinent with what Andre is saying. Um, I agreed with you that I think, you know, with the Chris team kind of managing the feedback, my only concern in trying to kind of echo what Andre was saying is that you know, we do have the CRISP proposal and it's been through, you know, the community consultation. It is actually the product of a community feedback. And so as the SLA is released, I think as the CRISP team kind of managing and, and you know, marshalling that feedback, we need to be very careful that um, it's not reopening of the proposal. You know, it's not people who maybe had comments before that they don't think made it into the proposal. This is not some opportunity to now try to change the proposal, I think what we're really looking at is whatever the product from the legal drafting team and um, you know, the RIRs and what the EC is going to release, I think the, the main issue is just if anybody feels there's a consistency issue with the proposal or the principles in the proposal, and it's not a kind of new opportunity to either change the principles in the proposal or even really be drafting, um, you know, we also don't want to get in the weeds of people trying to say, well, the SLA should say this in these terms. It should be more, we identify an inconsistency if they perceive one, the community has a chance to discuss that and everything else and give feedback. But, um, but I, I kind of uh, agree with Andre on this in that, or actually not kind of, I really do agree with Andre on this, that um, we need to be very specific in terms of how that feedback is is focused. Um, you know, obviously, I don't want to hinder anybody from saying anything, but I think that we also don't want to reinvent the wheel or go back to what um, the work that we had already done. I mean, we all worked very hard to engage the community to get to the Chris proposal. I wouldn't want now something really changing with the proposal. It's more if there's a consistency issue and, and we want to have transparency. That's that's the main focus of sharing this and. Um, you know, I hope that makes sense, and, and perhaps if anybody else has any follow-up comments on that. Thank you, Michael. Um, so I realized I wasn't being uh, clear enough, so that's uh, exactly what I, I was uh, trying to explain, and I think you explained it uh, very well. So this is like not opening up comments for the proposal, and um, so RIRs will be leading the process, and it's not going to be like the Chris team going out to the community saying that uh, we want comments on the proposal, no. So RIRs will be, will be consulting, 
and then when we will be seeing the uh, the comments from um, the community, um, you know, because we, we are also participating in the RIR um, consultation process. And I think when RIR staff need to judge, okay, from the community feedback, what should we incorporate? We need to be clear that what should be incorporated is uh, whether or not this comment is saying, hey, this is, uh, you know, like uh, this should have been in the SLA because it was uh, in the first team proposal. That is something that should be incorporated, but not to add anything new. So I think uh, we're in very much in agreement, and, um, and thank you very much, Michael, for explaining this clearly. So I see hand from Nirani. Thank you, and I um, and I actually think you just uh, probably expressed what I wanted to say, so I'll keep it very short. I very much agree with Andre and Michael, of course. We're not adding anything here. Uh, I, uh, the way I interpret it is that since it's um, the RAR is coming out with a draft take, um, the CRIS team can play a role in uh, as the writers of the proposal in, in actually, um, if there are comments, comments on the draft SLA, uh, to simply judge whether or not that's really in the spirit of the proposal according to the principles that we laid out. And in a, the way I see it is that by having the CRISP team, it, it's possible that the CRISP team won't actually uh, need to uh, step in at any point, but but I can see um, by having the CRISP team play a role, it, it actually makes it a little bit more transparent and it doesn't turn into a situation where the RIRs try to justify particular wording and try to say why they think this is in line with the proposal, why someone else might have a totally different interpretation. So it's really the way I see it is, is just to add clarity and transparency. Um, and I certainly agree that we, we do not want to enter into territory where we uh, are discussing adding or removing or modifying things in the existing proposal. Thanks. Thank you, Nurani. Um, so, um, I realized that uh, I, the way I explained didn't sound like that, but uh, so everything, all the comments from Andre, Michael, Norani is exactly what I intended to say, and this was what we discussed with the NROEC. So when we, uh, you know, when I shared this idea, um, the NROEC felt that this was reasonable, and I just wanted to double wet check with the Chris team, and I see everybody agreeing. Um, so, I, uh, no, I actually know. Um, Andre. Thank you, Zumi. It's a very uh, small hand from me. It's just clarifying one other thing. So I, I now I totally understand what was meant, and I totally agree that we don't want to reopen the proposal, and we should um, make it very clear. But there is another thing. There might be SLAs being developed that are not consistent with the CRIS proposal. Uh, uh, does the NRO expect us to play any role here in the review of the SLAs? Uh, this was not, uh, uh, I don't recall this was clearly confirmed, but um, I wouldn't uh, think this is uh, an issue. We, we can assume that uh, we will also be playing this role since we will be making sure the community uh, feedback will be like in, in line with the, um, the spirit of the, um, the SLA. So uh, I think we should double check with the NROEC in writing to be clear on what we agreed, but um, I think that that should be included as well as our role. Um, so thank you for confirming this, Andre. And um, um, so if there are no other comments related to um, this particular point on the role of the cruise team, let's go to 6C, which is sort of related. Um, so. Um, if you recall, um, there was an our website on the SLA discussions from APNIC 39, and uh, this was prepared by RIR and posted on the uh, Chris team um, on uh, the NOR website. But uh, there was like, some language that we felt that it wasn't um, really, um, it may be misleading, or some of the contents may not be fully in line with what was discussed and things like this. So um, I just wonder if we would want to have some kind of involvement before NRO um, posts um, any of the RIR, future RIR discussions uh, related to the SLA. And uh, one idea that I posted on the, um, on the Christie mailing news was that 
perhaps maybe the report can be prepared by the RIR staff from that region. Uh, so in this case, uh, in this case, uh, Michael is preparing this. But um, maybe it would be useful for the Chris team members, um, other Chris team members who attended that RIR meeting to see if this is also consistent with their understanding. And then, um, and then um, go on to um, NROEC's approval, then publish this. To avoid issue like the last time after being published, uh, we, we actually find some language that is like um, maybe misleading or um, don't feel that it should be expressed that way. So what do people think about uh, this uh, approach and involvement? So that would be including the future uh, meetings, right, AFRONIC, uh, LACNIC. Yes, in, indeed, that would include RIPE as well. Um, so if um, there are no disagreements um, about this, um, maybe this is the way that uh, we suggest to NROEC and uh, along with the 6B. And we, uh, we actually put this in writing, share with the Chris team, and then um, send this to the NROEC for confirmation. And sit here, yes, so I see um, no other comments um, on this. So let's go to seven, preparation for ICANN board panel. So just to share the background, um, so it's my understanding of the idea of this um, ICANN board panel is to have um, leaders from each of the operational communities plus uh, the organizations um, involved in this um, operational Community. So, in the case of the number of um, numbers, I've been invited, and Axel has been invited as the chair of the um, NROEC, and it's similar for other uh, communities as well. And um, so, in the, in the panel, we'll be discussing about um, the issues that need to be highlighted uh, from each of the operational communities that might be of an interest to to share in discussing future steps. Um, especially with the names also being put out already, and um, also the political um, issues related to the INS stewardship transition. So, and these are the bullet points of the, the topics that have been um, listed so far. And um, so, while the call, the, this panel itself, um, it's people can't join uh, real time but I would expect the video to be published. So all the discussions will be published. You can, you can listen to it uh, later. That, that's, the, that's the idea that I, I understand. And I'm double checking with the ICANN staff. And in case that um, they say, no, this is not open, then um, I wouldn't feel comfortable in, in participating in this. So next background. And I'm not seeing any hands. So let's just uh, go quickly go through the idea behind um, each of the agenda. I actually shared a very like a draft um, brief idea of what um, we might be saying for each of the topics. So I wonder, um, Herman, if you would be able to show on the screen of um, the PDF file that uh, I shared on the mailing list just before the call. Thank you very much. So if you scroll down, scroll down um, I don't know if it shows Agenda 7. Thank you. And uh, so on the, yeah, it's draft idea. So um, 7A is the issue of jurisdiction. And um, I think we've already discussed this in the, uh, in the Chris team proposal. And um, the, the idea is that, um, we, we don't have like a, we don't choose a particular country or, or the way of um, jurisdiction, but as long as this is uh, this treat all parties involved in the INS stewardship, um, the, the INA on numbering services, then uh, this is okay. And I just wonder if people have any other things to add related to jurisdiction that we should be expressing as a numbers community. Um, and it's a related um, point. There's uh, another topic being uh, raised as country of the annual uh, function operator. So that's a separate uh, topic from jurisdiction. I don't see any hand for um, 
point A on jurisdiction. So let's go to country of the owner function operator. Um, so my understanding is that, I mean, we don't need to say that we need to change and this uh, owner function operator should move out of the US. This is not necessary. I mean, it's, it's functioning okay. Um, but uh, as a separate topic, uh, there are some discussions in the ICANN Accountability Across Community um, Working Group about incorporating the, um, the by in the bylaws um, for ICANN to have its headquarters in the United States. And this is because it is already stated in the AOC and, um, and uh, we, we want to enforce um, some part of the AOC to, to make sure that this is um, not easy to, to change. Um, I don't know if we have a position related to this. Exactly, Andre, when, and we're not proposing to change the operator. I see hand from the running. Thank you, Simi. And, and sorry, actually, I'm, I was a little bit slow. Just, I am um, obviously uh, for, for the country of the IANA functions operator, it's more about who the IANA functions operator is. And in this case, we've said that we are happy to continue with the ICANN, uh, with ICANN as the IANA operator, um, at least in the initial period. Uh, just a question about the jurisdiction. What does that actually mean? Uh, what is the discussion around that? We have, of course, we've had our discussion about the jurisdiction for the SLA between the RIRs and IANA. Um, but to me, it's not entirely clear what the question, uh, what question A is, if there will be a, a, a discussion about the various communities' proposals and their individual jurisdictions, or if, if there's anything more to this question. Maybe you don't know either, but <laughs> it's the question I raised. Thanks. Um, it's a good question, but actually I didn't have a, a clear answer either. It's, um, this is the information that I, I have. I would, again, um, expect some kind of discussions over um, the ju which jurisdiction that ICANN as an organization uh, would, would belong to in terms of there are any um, issues. That this, is, this is something that has been discussed in ICANN Accountability um, Cross Community Working Group. So this could uh, possibly a uh, case, or I don't know, maybe in the um, in the names context, they might want to like discuss um, this issue in case I don't know CCTLD approval, and there are some legal issues. But I don't know. So this is something that people, everybody is interested to discuss from perhaps from their perspectives. And but at this point, I think we can just just say from the the IANA numbering services perspective. And I don't know if we have any comments related to the um, ICANN as an organisation, which jurisdiction that um, it should um, it should be. Um, but it, it also all depends on what issue that it's going to handle as well, I suppose. So, yeah, so this is as much as I can share at this stage. Yes, exactly, Nirani. So I'm in agreement with you. The only thing that we can say is what we wrote in a proposal, and anything beyond that, I think um, our position or opinion is really, we haven't discussed it. So I think um, I agree, and uh, so. If I have to comment on that, that will be something that I would uh, be saying. And uh, um, so the country of the, uh, can we move on to um, confirm if anybody have any comments related to um, B, which is country of the IANA operator? I think um, the point that we would be more interested is the issue of jurisdiction. And uh, as long as the, it meets the service level, we don't really care which uh, country the INR function operator resides on. Um, that, that's my understanding. Um, I don't know if they, anybody have any different comments. Please, Michael. Yes, um, just a quick thing. I think that I agree with what Narani says, that um, you know, the only opinion we have is what we wrote in our proposal. Um, I think with regard to country and jurisdiction, just from a legal kind of perspective, I think what's important for us is that since we're looking at an SLA, 
it's just about the jurisdiction in the country where we could have, um, you know, enforcement of the terms of the SLA and in case there was any need to use the terms of the SLA, you know, to um, ensure proper performance. So I think that's really, from my perspective, where we would stand. Um, I think on the other side of it, you know, the rest of that stuff seems to be more on the accountability side. You know, I mean, things, whether something's in a bylaw, in fact, in my mind, I think it would be more in the Articles of Incorporation than it would be on the bylaws, but that's a little bit more detail probably than we need here, and um, that seems to be more on the accountability side. So I just wanted to kind of um, put my agreement that with what Narani said, I think it's what we've stated in our proposal, and maybe the rest of it, um, you know, it may be pertinent to us uh, if anything really changes that might conflict with what, what our opinion has been so far, but I think that's our main concern is that we're contracting with an operator and we want to make sure that there's a proper jurisdiction and, um, <clears throat> you know, particular country and all that. If, if there was any kind of failure of the service level that we could enforce it uh, appropriately. So that's really all, all I was thinking. Thank you very much for um, clarifying. This, this would be, uh, this is very helpful um, in, in um, on getting this um, um, comment from the legal perspective. Yes, I, I, I very much agree. So um, let's go to C then. Um, so if this, I think this is um, what would be the implication if um, we don't meet the deadline. And um, so while the NTI states that there's no deadline, um, I think um, it's it's then it's difficult to say that we don't need to meet the deadline. Um, one could argue that uh, it could uh, increase ambiguity on whether or not um, the proposal will be accepted. So um, well, it's, it's a little bit hard to say anything more concrete than this, but um, we, we don't want to delay it to, too much while this is not a fixed uh, um, hard deadline. I think that's, that would be my um, basic position related to this, and I don't know if anybody have any other opinions or anything to add related to um, this point. I see no hand. Um, and so that, let's go to D. Um, yes, indeed, Moandra. So there was some comments uh, from the NTIA that the deadline is not cast in stone. That, that is what the NTIA has been saying. And so even if we don't meet the deadline, um, they can ex um, um, extend the uh, renewing the contract. So that's what um, NTIA is saying indeed. That is correct. And thank you for um, raising this. Um, so let's go to D. Um, I can't remember what the topic was. Oh, I think this is about the possibility of changing the ion operator. So I think this is what uh, Andre has uh, mentioned earlier. We're not saying that we will change the ion operator. We're say simply saying that we want this possibility, um, the ability to be able to, to choose the ion operator if needed. But we don't have a concrete plan at this stage. And um, as stated in our proposal, we're very satisfied with the current um, ion operator, which is ICANN. And it's just that having this ability is uh, very important in ensuring accountability. I think that's um, the basic idea behind this. Uh, that's my um, um, that's what I plan to to say related to this point. Hand from Andre. Just one point of clarification. I think it was mentioned a few times today on the call that um, we are not prepared to change the the operator uh, unless uh, there is something with the service levels. But I think what we discussed while we prepared the proposal that service level is not the only condition. Uh, for the termination of this contract. We actually haven't defined a condition. There was some, um, some I think, feedback to define those conditions, but uh, based on the community feedback, uh, we decided not to define any specific condition for the termination and rather keep it open. So if community decides that we need to change the operator and terminate con con contract, that possibility exists. I think I'm, I'm feeling that uh, aren't we kind of changing the scope a little bit here? Yes, that is correct. So we haven't really defined um, 
a specific situation, and we're not actually saying in a proposal that um, we will only terminate uh, if they don't um, meet this. So like, no, this is not what our proposal is saying. Um, and just to do a little bit of stimulation, because um, Andre has raised a good uh, point, this, is, this could be a, a point of discussion, is that uh, so if people say that, okay, so how, what, what do we do? Um, um, how do you ensure that um, the stability of the iron operator will maintain if the numbers um, community just uh, decide to change the iron operator? Even if the current iron operator meets the, the service level, and this um, this might um, actually change the operator has this risk of um, changing the stability and the service level. I, I I don't know if we are able to clearly answer this at this point, um, um, but um, I would expect that this may be something of a point that will be raised. I'm not seeing any um, hand or comment from anybody, so maybe I'll just like uh, leave it here. And uh, if people have any, um, if I hear any comments related to this, then I'll make sure to to share um, and update the Chris team. So um, the last is um, the issue of intellectual property rights. So we consider the IETF trust as an um, acceptable option, um, and we might expect some concerns to be expressed from the NIMS uh, community. But we're not saying that um, IETF trust is the only option open to coordinate with the other operational communities. But at the same time, um, I think we really want to make sure that uh, we try to use the existing schemes as much as possible and not creating anything totally new and something that takes a lot of time to prepare uh, just for this. So I think that would be the basic uh, spirit. Um, and the ITF trust seems to be the visible uh, option to us at this stage. So I think that would be along the lines of what would, I would be saying on this point. Um, are there any comments, questions? And is this some um, hand from Andre? Is this an old hand or a new hand? Um, if it's a new old hand. One, expired one. Okay. No, thank you, Noreen. Okay. Oh, I see a comment from Jean-Vier. So this is a very com complex action for the RIR community to choose the INR operator. The RIR community must work this more deeply and make the acceptable proposal. Okay, yeah, thank you very much. I, I would expect uh, um, some more questions uh, related to this, uh, this point. Yeah. So I think yeah we want to be prepared in like receiving questions related to this and it might help to have um, some of the SA, um, FAQ um, developed related to this point um, if needed. So thank you for um, raising this point, Shonbe. So I think that's what um, we covered um, the part of the agenda which was originally uh, planned for, um, except for the next uh, confirm and negative of the next call. We have already exceeded uh, six minutes, and I just wonder if people want to do like a quick um, discussions related to the names proposal, or um, we can just do this online. How? What people feeling? Um, if people think that we can have a little bit more time, have um, have a meeting until um, um, thirteen fifteen UTC, then maybe it would be good to to quickly cover this as well. I see no hand, so um, maybe we, we want to cover this um, also related to names and how we would be um, be communicating with them in the future. Um, so I just had a really um, quick read of the uh, the names proposal, and this, there seems to be a couple of points that uh, is talking about um, maybe ensuring how the um, the IANA function will be running properly and uh, this will be a, a joint, um, this is something that will be done jointly um, 
with other communities. That may be something that uh, might be affecting us, and uh, I can't just recall from the top of my head on um, all the things that I thought would affect us. But um, I think we should um, should actually talk to the names um, chairs and confirm um, what exactly they are, and how do we actually uh, make give input to the names um, communities? Another question that I would have. So. Since they're um, in the public comment period until the 20th of May, I would expect that um, they would um, want us to submit public comment. Um, and um, so maybe we would still ask for an opportunity to individually have talk, I know, have talk with the names um, CWG chairs to share our feedback and um, explain the, the rationale and the idea behind our comments. But I, I mean, if I were in their shoes, I would certainly like to, to have a written um, comment submitted as a part of their public comment rather than trying to um, figure out how we would incorporate um, the numbers um, community's comment, which is not written together with other public comments. Um, so that's my general thinking. So maybe perhaps have like a, a call with the a name CWG um, chairs once to for them to give us an update on what to pay attention to, and then um, share with them that we're interested in regular updates, and then have a, a call again once we have a more clear position on on the feedback to the proposal, so that um, we are able to share the, the concept behind our proposal that we will be uh, not, not the comments that we'll be submitting to the, um, the to the names of proposal. So that's my thinking on the way forward, and I don't know if people have um, any other um, comments related to this. Um, if not, then um, myself and Nurani will go ahead and uh, follow up with the names of CWG chairs with the, um, the appointment, and um, I'll keep you updated about um, what would be the exact agenda that we will be having, and of course, um, update you once uh, we have a meeting with them. Oh, Nurani, sorry. Sorry for jumping in again. Um, I just, uh, I, I don't have a uh, well thought uh, through wise uh, solution to provide you, uh, but I, I have, uh, well, two, two points regarding the CWG. I think obviously we need some more time for us to read the, the CWG uh, proposal and we might need to set aside some time at the next uh, um, meeting to discuss this, uh, but it's, the next meeting, I presume, will be in two weeks, and in between now and then, we we might need to uh, to move a little quicker, um, and some of it uh, might be best done on on the mailing list. But uh, two things: one is is I think we need to think about where um, the number community comes into um, uh, come, comes into play here, um, and uh, secondly. I think it would be very good, uh, and I guess this is maybe a, a question to the CRISP team, it would be very good if someone could do a very first initial analysis of where do we think the CWG proposal uh, is consistent or inconsistent with our own proposal, uh, both so that we can um, have a think in, about those potential conflicts uh, and how to respond to, um, how to bring this up with the uh, CWG chairs, but also between now and, and um, the CWG deadline, um, we want to make sure to get that input uh, there, of course. Um, and I don't know what the best way forward is, if, if um, possibly someone on the CRISP team would be happy to volunteer to do that, or even uh, if uh, an RIR staff member could be uh, ask to do that that uh, initial sort of um, analysis, but I think we certainly need to have that before we know exactly how to proceed. Thank you, Nurani. Excellent point. So, um, may I suggest that uh, we actually maybe ask 
maybe at least have like a draft, a rough timeline on what to do or when or before we submit a proposal or a comment to, to the names and how we actually engage the, the numbers community um, on the, the global list and regional list, um, as well as the appointment with the, um, the name CWG chairs. And then also we ask for our volunteers on who can who might be able to. Oh, Michael, did you volunteer? Okay, wonderful. Okay, so we already have our volunteers, and so we can just like, um, um, you know, um, also send this on the mailing list and see if there any anybody else who's willing to work on this, and then yeah. So how about? Um, we, we move this way. And thank you again, Rani, oh, no, no, Michael, for, um, for volunteering. It's very helpful. And also, I see John um, offering to help uh, Michael as well. Yes, super. Yep. Um, so I think um, if people have no other comments uh, related to how we um, engage and uh, submit comments on the prepare comments within um, the names uh, proposal, I think we're good with this uh, agenda. And uh, so let's um, confirm the date of the um, the next call. Oh. Uh, oh, thank you very much, Pinder, for joining. Um, and I also saw a, a question from um, John V. Is the NRO is the NRO has the tools to easily terminate the contract of the INA operator? Um, maybe the RIR staff is in a better... Um, can you repeat the question? Do you know if is, the NRO has chosen? Is the, N, the NRO has the tools to easily terminate the contract of the INO operator? That's the question that I see on the chat. So, um... I don't know, um, John, if you want to explain a little bit about the, the intention behind this uh, question, or are you happy to take this online um, and uh, confirm on the mailing list? It, it's up to you. I, I, can I, I can, this okay. address, I can okay. try to Please. elaborate a little bit. I believe the NRO only considers uh, ICANN as the, 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 the operator and the current uh, operator and the one who will be the signatory for the operator in, at the SLA. We are trying to cover some bases uh, in order to understand the process for um, replacing that IN oper eventually that IN operator in order to, as you said uh, very wisely today, uh, to have the ability of and uh, have a process to do that, to replace eventually the IN operator. But uh, we haven't uh, thought about a process to choose a new one, and I believe the NRO is a little far to go into into those details. I don't know if it, this that is what what ask and if this is helping to answer the question. Thank you, Andres, um, for for explaining this. Um, I don't know if uh, John, if uh, this uh, clarifies your, your question. Thank you, Andres. I see on the comment from John V. So I think um, it's, it's clear to, to John V. And so if you have any further questions, maybe a good thing to like um, continue engagement online on the mailing list or ask the RIR staff individually um, as well. So um, thank you so much. And uh, so we. Uh, Herman, am I correct in um, assuming that the, the exact date of the next poll is uh, not uh, fixed? Uh, per, I mean, we haven't conducted a doodle poll on that, have we? So if we have not, then um, I would. Um, it would be great if um, Herman or anybody from and our secretary can help us uh, do, do this uh, fixing of the exact date of the, the next call and also confirm on the regularity um, like whether it would be like every for example like Tuesday or the first um, or first Tuesday and then the, the second meeting of the month will be every I don't know Thursday or like and then exact time. 
Yeah, I need uh, uh, so I need more information from the uh, CRISP uh, members uh, before I suggest a specific uh, date of the month that we can have the, the teleconference. Uh, some people already submitted their preference, but uh, uh, I need more more information from the rest of the of the CRISP before I can make a suggestion to the group. Okay, um, no to turn that on. I see hand from Bonnie. Uh, hello, um, this is Narania. I'm, you cut out at the end, but I, I hope you gave me the floor. Uh, apologies, and I'm obviously less intelligent than uh, Ferman, Andre, Mwenda, Izumi, and John, because <laughs> I, was, I was not sure as to how to fill out this, uh, this doodle, but I, I presume that it meant first Wednesday, and, and I actually don't understand how to <laughs> interpret the first Monday, first Tuesday, first Wednesday, and I'm incredibly embarrassed for admitting this on a publicly recorded call. But could could someone please explain that to me? What what that means? Sure. Um, I mean, my understanding was that maybe better for how man to explain, but my how I understood was the I mean the first week of the. Mm, the, if it says the first Wednesday of the month, that will be the first uh, Wednesday that comes in that month. That's that's how I interpreted it. That's correct. That's correct. That's the way it would be easier, I think, okay, to I'm set uh, a fixed a fixed date. Okay, so right. that's the the first. That's what it means. The first Monday of the month. The first Tuesday of the month. First. Okay. Thank you. An apology, <laughs> everyone. <laughs> <laughs> right. I I stated in the mail that uh, I also support two other groups and um, the ASO meets the first Wednesday of each month and the EC the third Tuesday. So if you decide uh, of the group I think or feel that it's better those dates, uh, I will need to reorganize a bit, a bit backstage the support, but uh, um, no problem with, uh, with any dates that the Chris members could decide to, that would like to meet um, in a regular basis, any of the, any dates of the, of the month. Okay, oh, thank you very much, Roman. So I just uh, not clear at this stage what more information that you would be needing, but maybe rather than discussing this um, online among those of us who are here, it might be better to to um, uh, uh, to do this on the mailing list, unless there's something that you think would be helpful in confirming verbally uh, at this meeting, Herman. Would, would it work to to confirm more details uh, online on whatever you want no, to confirm right. with the team? No, no, it's, no, no, it's all right. We can keep the discussion, uh, operational discussion in the, in the mailing list. Okay. Um, there is another open question, uh, which will be the, the, the time of the teleconference, and I was just suggesting to keep um, 1 p.m. UTC if that is is the best time for the most of the uh, of the members. But uh, we can also have that discussion on the list. So okay, but sure. Something something for you to think. Okay, yeah. Thank you, Herman. I I'm cool. I think it was Craig who who wanted to rotate. I'm pretty okay with the fixed time or rotation either. So. Um, maybe we can confirm um, on, on the list, and uh, especially with Craig, you see how strongly he feels about it. So um, thank you very much. And so um, maybe roughly from two weeks' time, we will be having a call, but the, the exact date and time is to be fixed uh, per duty call. So thank you very much. And uh, sorry that it extended a little bit. And uh, actually, I see a post about information on the CDB stewardship webinar. So thank you for this information as well. Okay, thanks all. Talk to you again. Bye.